Hey homies, videos like this take a metric crap ton of time to make, so if you could drop a like and maybe subscribe if you haven't already, that would make me super happy. Thank you so much, and enjoy the video. Alright lads, the video you've all not been waiting for, but somehow we're still curious enough to click on the thumbnail and find out, today we're indulging in a little known concept called a tier list, and via said tier list we will be ranking every single dungeon weapon inside Destiny 2 for PvE specifically. Now of course before we start I do need to lay down some ground rules so that we're all on the same page. Firstly, I know that both Pit and Shattered Throne have weapon loot that isn't 100% exclusive to them but I'm going to include it anyway since they still drop from a dungeon, making them dungeon weapons. Second, Wish Ender will not be on this list because Third, this is just how I personally view each tier in the tier list. The trash tier is just as it sounds, trash. D tier is reserved for overall bad weapons. You might get some use out of them just for fun, but they're never all that great. C tier is for okay slash usable weapons, but I would never prioritize them under any circumstance. B tier means good. If something is in B tier, I think it's an overall good weapon. A tier means really good. These are the weapons that I would go into simp territory for and maybe subscribe to their OnlyFans. And finally, we have the S tier, which is the must have godlike weaponry that no guardian should ever be without. Finally, the last ground rule that I need to set in place is that this video is personal opinion. Everyone views weapons differently and nobody's tier list will ever be 100% the same, so it's okay to disagree with someone and not throw a fit in the comments. I promise. With that said, ladies and gentlemen, before we jump into it, allow me to pay the bills by telling you how you can save on yours with HelloFresh. Yeah, that transition was pretty good, wasn't it? But for real though, HelloFresh is the real deal when it comes to getting your hands on healthy and affordable food, and I'm gonna tell you how. They are the number one meal kit in America when it comes to making eating easier with no stressful meal planning, better with not needing to deal with grocery stores, and cheaper because of the great deals that they have on some really amazing meal kits. Every meal kit has foolproof step-by-step -step recipes that make cooking stress-free and can be done so quickly that they cut back on time spent in the kitchen with meals ready in about 30 minutes or less. Not only that, but they've completely gone out of their way to become the first carbon neutral meal kit company with nearly all packaging being fully recyclable, and they are overall up to 72% cheaper than dining at a restaurant or grocery shopping, which are both just huge W's. Speaking of cheaper, you guys can use my link or go to HelloFresh.com and use code POGDJAUG16 for 16 free meals across 7 boxes and 3 surprise gifts. Once you click, my description will live update to count up the purchases as well. I wouldn't promote a product that I don't believe in, so check out their stuff in the description and thank you so much to HelloFresh for sponsoring today's video. With all that said, and me being a little hungry now, let's jump into this. We're going to be going dungeon by dungeon in order of how recently they were released, so let's kick things off with duality and place the fixed odds in the A tier. Fixed odds is a legendary 360 RPM solar LMG with the capabilities of feeling like an exotic at times thanks to its ad clear potential. Rolling with field prep and incandescent, you'll be filled to the brim with reserve ammo, have lightning fast reloads, and be able to clear rooms of enemies with no problem. Fixed Odds is also one of only two craftable dungeon weapons in the game, meaning that enhanced perks are on the line. Incandescent is one of the few enhanced perks that actually feel like they make a huge difference, so don't miss out on crafting your perfect god roll to basically turn this gun into Solar Thunderlord. Some people may disagree with me because I seem to like machine guns more than others, but I'm placing Fixed Odds in the A tier as it's definitely one of the best machine guns in the game, hands down. Moving on to our next weapon of the video, we find ourselves at one of the most unique guns in the game, the New Purpose, and I'm really having a hard time deciding between A or B, but I think I'm going to put this in the B tier. Here. This stasis pulse rifle is many things, but what it does in particular that no other weapon can is roll with adapted munitions while in the kinetic slot, and that can even be paired with armor piercing rounds for even more shield damage. This makes New Purpose a very versatile weapon inside match game content, and it's a pretty solid weapon to pair with something like Divinity for example in GMs. It gives the user the ability to have every shield and the strike covered, while also providing the usual support role that Div users partake in with debuffing and overloading targets. 
Of course, for more general gameplay, it rolls with Desperado and Headstone in those final columns, but I wanted to focus on what specifically makes this gun stand out. Despite being super unique in what it brings to the table though, I'm not too big on the archetype of the weapon, and at the end of the day in Grandmaster content, if you're playing to win, then your team should already have a strategy and shields covered pretty extensively, making my chances of using this thing fairly low. I'm going to put it in the B tier though, I think it's a good pulse rifle, and honestly, depending on when you ask me, it could go either way between B and A tier. Up next we have my favorite weapon from the new season, and that is the Unforgiven. I'm placing this in the A tier while fighting all of my bias possible to refrain from moving it to S. Basically, what you need to know about Unforgiven at the end of the day is that if you can land the literal 5 out of 5, then you got yourself one of the strongest primaries in the game. Unfortunately though, getting good enough RNG to land one is so atrocious that I can't possibly give it an S tier rating. Basically, if you fix up the stability, lean heavy into reload speed via the magazine, masterwork and maybe even frenzy and finally land yourself demo as a perk in the first column you have one deadly boy it's essentially a volatile round machine as it makes proccing that buff via grenade kills very accessible to every class in the game instead of just mostly controversial warlocks it sits in a very strong archetype the 750s and just overall is a fantastic weapon if this weapon had some better base stats, I might have moved it into S, but needing to focus so hard on landing good perks in just about every category made me feel the need to bump it down a notch. Moving on, let's go ahead and get to our first S tier weapon of the video, and that is the Storm Chaser. Not too much that I can say that hasn't already been said here, this is just the ultimate linear fusion rifle for just about any content in the game. It tears through raid bosses, it tears through grandmasters, and it's just all around the perfect linear for any situation. With a god roll like Clown firing line you'll be ready for any raid situation and clown frenzy will be your friend during any other content in the game it's also in a unique archetype of its own allowing it to three burst with each charge giving it incredible damage so yeah anything less than s tier is a war crime at this point while we're on the topic of s tier though let's go ahead and get this next one out of the way the lingering dread now before i even say anything else just look at the gun itself the end of the barrel looks like it's pog champing so i rest my case for it being in the s tier but if you want me to elaborate even more, Lingering Dread is the best blinding GL in the game. It's a kinetic slot GL, specifically Stasis, allowing you to have an elemental primary in those match game situations. Its Stasis element allows for synergies that other kinetic options don't have, and it can roll with not only blinding and auto loading, but also chill clip to allow for another layer of crowd control when using this thing. It's the ultimate weapon for keeping ads under control, and a must have for just about anybody out there. Now, thus far, I've been gassing up every weapon from the duality dungeon, but now it's time to get into the bad apples of the loot pool, starting with our first trash tier weapon of the video, the Epicurean. Now I know some people will try and argue with me that I'm only putting it in trash because I don't like fusions, but that's not true. I love Riptide, Cartesian, Likely Suspect, etc, and Epicurean is just light years away from even comparing to those weapons. All it really takes is a quick look at the perk pool to realize there really isn't anything good here. Maybe this gun is passable for PvP, but even so, this is a PvE list, so to the trash tier it goes. Just no reason to use this over any other fusion in the game. Lastly, for the duality dungeon, we find ourselves at the exotic Heart Shadow, and I'll be placing this in the D tier. In a world where we have Lament, Fallen Guillotine, Hero of Ages, and Soul of Scar, why would I not only use this sword, but have it take up my exotic heavy slot at that? It has some fun Void 3.0 synergies, but at the end of the day, it's a huge waste to have in that heavy slot, but I'm keeping it out of trash because it actually does have some potential unlike Epicurean, but the effort needed to realize that potential just isn't worth the hassle in my opinion, as well as the trade-off for an exotic. With that said, we're finally done with the duality dungeon loot and can segue on over to Grasp of Avarice, and let's kick things off with a literal bang, with the Galahorn going into S tier. As a Destiny 1 veteran, I low-key want to say that D2's version of Galahorn is even better than what it used to be, and that's thanks to all the utility that Bungie gave this weapon. Not only is it great for single target DPS, add clear when in a pinch, but it also provides wolfpack rounds to all nearby teammates that are also using rockets. It's such a cool dynamic to have in a fire team, as it helps free up the exotic slot of your teammates, and your composition as a squad doesn't just boil down to everyone using Galahorn and nothing else. It single-handedly brought rocket launcher DPS into the spotlight, as a super good option for boss bakes with weapons like Hothead for example, whenever it can roll with Field Prep and Clown, to just absolutely maximize the amount of Wolfpack rounds coming from each person. Galahorn is an S tier weapon, no ifs, ands, or buts about it. 
Up next, let's talk about our next sword for the video, the Hero of Ages, and I'm putting this one in the B tier, but it may potentially be A tier, depending on how it interacts with Arc 3.0 come next season. Probably one of the most slept on swords in the game, this one is unlike any other as it's a vortex frame that's built for ad clear and grenade generation via its demo and chain reaction role. You can trade in the nade generation for unrelenting if you'd like to make yourself near unkillable, but what is life without your boom booms, you know? Because it rolls with an ability regening perk, it's one of the main weapons that I recommend getting before arc 3.0 drops, but even if there isn't much synergy there after the update comes out, it's still one of the best swords in the game and it rightfully earns its spot as a strong B tier option. Up next, we find ourselves at the first shotgun of the video, the Matador 64. And despite the pellet shotgun buffs we've received as of late, I'll place this in the C tier. Pellet shotguns are just in such a weird spot, and with the nerfing of 1 2 punch as of late, and with perks like trench barrel continuing to just be underwhelming, I see no reason to use pellet shotties all that much outside of very specific situations. With that said, there are two other pellet shotguns on the list that I'm pretty much going to say the exact same thing about. Out. so for a sudden death and retold tale, I'm also going to go ahead and place them in the C tier. They're mainly PvP weapons anyways, hence not much PvE usability, but honestly, that's just pellet shotguns in general 9 times out of 10. They're okay, but would I ever use them over something like a special GL, fusion, wither horde, etc? Probably not. Now, making our way back up to the S tier, let's talk right quick about the Ayas Luna, because this hand cannon is just nothing short of phenomenal. With base stats that are out of this world, a perk combination that makes me feel all hot and spicy on the inside, and stasis as its element, Ayas Luna rises to the top of the tier list by simply being the best stasis weapon in the game in my opinion. With roles like Unrelenting Headstone for survivability and ad clear, or Outlaw Headstone if you want destruction at an even quicker pace, you'll be slaying enemies in PvE like they're nothing with next to no effort. This is by far the best ad clear hand cannon in the game thanks to these stasis fragments that make headstone an incredible perk, even inside master content, and the range at which headstone can hit enemies is absolutely ridiculous, and with the lightning fast reload speeds you get, you'll have almost no downtime between popping heads and popping crystals to clear rooms full of enemies. The build potential with stasis wells is also nothing to scoff at, but honestly it's not even needed to make Ice Luna feel like an S tier option. Now, going from a cream of the crop kind of weapon to something a bit disappointing, we have our last weapon for Grasp of Avarice, the D tier 1000 yard stare. This weapon, just like the pellet shotguns on this list, is truly just built to be a PvP weapon, so its viability in PvE will suffer as a result. With triple tap and maybe demo being the best role it has for a sustained DPS role, 1k stare doesn't exactly bring too much to the table that we'd like to see from sniper rifles. There are so many options out there with fourth times, focus Focus Fury, Firing Line, etc. that we could choose from, so there isn't much of a reason that 1k stairs should even be in your arsenal. That said, at least it has some use, so I'm going to keep it out of trash tier and place it where it belongs in D. Now that we're done with Grasp, let's move on over to Prophecy and start things off by dropping the Judgment Hand Cannon in the A tier. Potentially one of the most slept on hand cannons in my opinion, Judgment goes toe to toe with Fatebringer for the best kinetic option, and it kind of just boils down to what kind of player you are. Judgment rolls with Demolitionist and Time Payload, giving it constant grenade energy, a reload perk, reduced damage fall off, and bonus bullet damage on every shot. It's one of my personal favorite weapons in the game despite not owning the role I I want, but I had to gas it up for the tier list because not nearly enough people give this gun the credit it deserves. While on the topic of A tier weapons, Darkest Before is up next for the A tier, and it's also another weapon that will never drop for me no matter how much I farm. This arc rapid fire is a fantastic option for those wanting a super solid pulse for match game content, as it can roll with overflow one for all giving it a massive magazine and a 35% damage buff to pair with it for 10 seconds. Getting a pended mag as your magazine perk will also make overflow increase your mag to 84 total bullets, allowing you to wreck total carnage on any group of enemies that finds their way in your path. The gun looks sexy too, so bonus points for that. Up next, let's finally talk about our next sniper for the tier list, that being the Long Walk, and I'm going to slap this bad boy in the B tier as it's a solid all-around sniper rifle. It's an aggressive frame with DPS perks that would overall be better on another archetype, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's bad. With a pended mag, you can boost the mag size up to 4, and you have the option 
options of Overflow or Clown to pair with the Firing Line, making the Long Walk an overall good option for DPS if you're lacking something else in that slot. It's nothing remarkable, but I wouldn't call it mediocre and I wouldn't call it a bad weapon either. What is remarkable, however, is the next weapon we're going to talk about, the Last Breath Kinetic Auto Rifle that we're going to be putting in the A tier. Very similar to Judgment as it's overall an often overlooked weapon that truly is one of the best in a slot. The Last Breath can get a similar bullet damage and grenade regen roll to the Judgment as it gets Demo Adrenaline, Demo One For All, and Demo Frenzy, but can also get subsistence in that first column if you'd like to just full sin on the spray and pray playstyle. When it comes to good kinetic autos, this is one of the first that come to mind for me, and I'm honestly blown away that more people still aren't giving this gun a try. Definitely slept on, but still deserving of an A tier spot on the list. Finally, for our last weapon in the Prophecy Loot Pool, we find ourselves at the Swift Verdict Sidearm, and it's going straight in the Trash tier. When compared to Burst Sidearms, Automatic Sidearms, or even more recently the Drang from the Leviathan, a Swift Verdict just falls short in every avenue. With subpar perks and a subpar frame, there is literally zero reason to use this in PvE over the other sidearms in the game, making it one of the most useless options in the game in my opinion. Drang showed me the light when it comes to single shot sidearms, and Swift Verdict just doesn't have a glimmer of shine to it comparatively. Moving on to one of my all time favorite dungeons, the Pit of Heresy, we have our next B tier entry, the Xenophage Exotic Machine Gun. Before Bungie reverted the nerf to this thing, I probably would have placed it in either C or D, but thank god they changed it because the RPM they had it on for a while just made it feel absolutely awful. Xenophage is an all around good weapon overall, but when it comes to actual usability, I never find myself using it outside of the Oracle encounter of Vault of Glass, but that said, it's very reliable and it can dish out a decent amount of DPS and splash damage on adds unfortunate enough to be in the way. It's nothing extraordinary, but a good weapon nonetheless. Up next for the Pit of Heresy weapons, we find ourselves at the Apostate Sniper Rifle, and straight into D tier it goes. One of the coolest looking weapons in the game, but extremely underwhelming overall. Its best PvE role looks like lead from gold and explosive payload, but extra ammo and an 11% boost to headshot damage cannot save this weapon from the fiery clutches of D tier, just a super underwhelming weapon overall. While on the topic of underwhelming, let's go ahead and throw another weapon into the D tier, the Blasphemer Slug Shotgun. This weapon pretty much lacks anything it would need to be a really good option in PvE for that second column, which sucks because it has 4th times in the first column setting it up for some really good potential. It's mainly a PvP slug at the end of the day, but man, Vorpal in that final column could change so much about the rankings on this shotgun in today's list. Moving on to an often forgot about weapon though, we have one residing in the B tier known as the Heretic Rocket Launcher. This rocket is in the aggressive frame archetype, allowing it to benefit the most from the archetype buffs Bungie did not too long ago, and it can roll with field prep and lasting, making the DPS output of this rocket not bad at all. I'd still argue Hothead is a better rocket overall, but it isn't a bad pick for whenever Hothead is rotated out of the Nightfall loot pool. Finally, for Pitta Heresy, we have our first C tier weapon in a while, and that is the Premonition, the only truly exclusive weapon to the Pit of Heresy dungeon. Premonition is a void high impact pulse that unfortunately falls victim to a pretty lackluster perk pool. What keeps it from D tier however, is the sheer lack of void pulses currently in the game right now, and if you're someone with a Last Perdition or Grid Skipper for example, Premonition is just one of those weapons that should not be on your radar. The outdated perk pool and limiting farming options for this weapon just make it pretty undesirable, but I wouldn't go as far as to call it an outright bad weapon, so the C tier is where it will reside. Finally, we make our way to the Shattered Throne weapons for the video, and so let's just kick things off with our final A tier entry of the list, the Vouchsafe 200 RPM Void Scout. This is one of the best elemental scouts in the game hands down, as it's very similar to the Night Watch in terms of the roll it gets with Rapid Hit Explosive, and it's not only easily farmable from Shattered Throne, but also you can get it through Umbral Focusing. I'm a pretty big fan of the new Trial Scout, but when it comes to the best in slot Void Scout, nothing is going to be topping Vouchsafe safe anytime soon. It's a must have for anyone that finds himself in match game content, like Grandmasters for example. Moving back down from A tier and into C tier though, we find ourselves next with the Sleepless Rocket Launcher. This rocket is in a fairly mediocre archetype with fairly mediocre perks, so I figured C tier was the best place to put it. Field Prep and Vorpal will be your best bet here, but overall it's just not all that great of a rocket, so it's best to just avoid using it if you can help it. 
Staying in the C tier, let's talk about a weapon with a fantastic perk pool, but it just doesn't have the best archetype to fully realize its potential, and that is the Tiger Spite. With perks like Outlaw, Ambitious, Subsistence, and Overflow in the first column, combined with Demo or Frenzy in the second, you'd think it wouldn't be all that bad of a pick. Unfortunately though, 450 RPM autos are just in a tough spot, and have been for quite some time now. Maybe once they get a buff, we'd see a resurgence in this weapon's usage, but for now, it'll stay in the C tier. And hey, yet again, while we're on the topic C tier, let's throw in yet another C tier weapon, the Twilight Oath. This rapid fire sniper isn't bad by any means, it just doesn't have the supporting perks that you'd want from a sniper of its kind. Looking at the perks, Lead from Gold and Vorpal are good, but had Lead from Gold been a more sustained DPS oriented perk, the sniper would definitely go up a tier or two. There are just much better options out there nowadays, and this weapon has been power crept to stay in the C tier. Finally, crawling out of the C tier, we have our next B tier weapon in the form of the Waking Vigil. Waking Vigil, just like the weapon before it, has seen quite a bit of power creep in its time being in the game, but unlike Twilight, it's still a more than viable option for those wanting to use it. Although worse than Cantata and Nation of Beast, it can still roll with Rapid Ed or Outlaw, combined with Dragonfly, Kill Clip, or Vorpal, making it a more than good enough option to equip from time to time. If you guys like 140 hand cannons, definitely not a bad option. And lastly for the video, we find ourselves ending things off in the D tier with the Adaptive Frame Sword Abide the Return. Following a similar theme with the rest of the older weapons, a by the return has simply just been power crept and currently loses out to Solar Scar as being the top solar sword in the game right now, at least for legendaries. Nothing really crazy on the perk side, not really a good archetype, just overall a bad sword and not really worth running, so it'll stay in the D tier where it belongs. With all that said, ladies and gentlemen, and 4,500 words later in the script, we are finally done with today's video. We went through and ranked every single dungeon weapon currently in Destiny 2 in a tier list, and I hope you all enjoyed. With Duality's release and us having a total of 5 dungeons in D2 now, I figured it was about time that I made this video to complement my raid weapon tier list that I made not too long ago. If you somehow managed to watch all of today's video to the very end, I thank you so much for going the extra mile and supporting the content, and before we end things off as always, I'd like to give a shout out to my Patreon supporters, as well as my tier 2s, Onrock, Admus, Vile, John, and Homebase Serenity, as well as my tier 3s, Senko, and Galumia. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.